Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, The Venus Faith. It's the Venus here, and today I'm going to be giving tips on buying your first vehicle, buying your first car. So if you're interested, then stay tuned. So you guys, if you clicked on this video, then you more than likely want to know how to shop for your first car, what to expect, what to look out for. Now, I'm not a car expert, but um. I had a few vehicles in my life so far in a short period of time so i do know a little of what to look for what to watch out for and what to expect okay so the first tip i would recommend to do is to look for the cars that intrigue you that pique your interest now if you're starting off with with a budget which most of us do start off with when we get our first vehicle if we're not making a ton of money or we don't have a ton of money to spare or a car isn't being passed down to us and um you might not be able to get your dream car unless your dream car is you know a more simple type of car but just look for some cars that you like now me i know i always wanted an all black vehicle i still have never had an all black vehicle yet but um that was something that i looked for then i have a specific make and model that i really really wanted i mean over time i did notice different makes that I really liked and I did try to go for those but I, my thing was as long as it's black then that's what I want to go for okay so make a list or just keep in mind the things that you really want to go for in a car so and if you don't have any idea maybe you, you might know that you like red or black or white or something like that but look online for different vehicles so you can see what your exact taste is in vehicles and cars okay and so you can know the prices of different vehicles too this way you could get um, an idea about how much these type of vehicles that you're interested are the next tip would be to decide between a used car and a new car. So um, again, since I would assume that most people would be on a budget when purchasing their first car. So um, I would normally, I would recommend going for a used car for your first car. And that's what I did. I got had a used car and I also bought my first car with um, cash as well. I paid it in full. But um, we're going to get into that a little bit after this. But yeah, you just want to decide if you want to get a used car or a new car, um, depending on your budget or depending on your credit. And if you don't know your credit score, if you have credit, then I would recommend to create a Credit Karma account and an Experian account. Experian is more trustworthy, but I still like Credit Karma. And um, say you don't have any credit at all, there's different videos here on YouTube that you can look up on how to build your credit. I already told you guys that I would recommend for your first vehicle to be a used vehicle if you don't have it like that, especially. And um, yeah, like I mentioned before, my first vehicle was used. All my vehicles have been used so far, actually. And um, it was painful. And my vehicle was pretty pretty cheap because it was older than 10 years old okay you don't have to like get a car super old but it would it made my vehicle really like affordable only i paid less than two thousand dollars for my vehicle my first car not my car that i have now my um, first car that i have the next tip would be to look for cars under 80 miles so mileage is very important and i learned this from my mother she knows a lot about cars especially for a woman in my opinion i heard her all my life talking about miles on cars so if she needs to buy a new car and she will go look for them she always considered the mileage if you're buying a car you definitely don't want to get anything that's 100,000 miles or more when your car gets to 100,000 miles that's when you gotta like really you're gonna have to keep on putting so much into the vehicle so i recommend looking for a vehicle that's under eighty thousand miles um maybe fifty thousand or less would be the best um and you know some cars it's different like some cars can run really good up to three hundred thousand miles but with most cars you want to stay under a hundred thousand miles because it would have more than likely to have a better longevity and when you have high mileage you often will have to do so many repairs you will have to get a special type of um oil change i know when i had my high my first car was a high mileage it wasn't a hundred thousand miles it was less than that but um i had to get 
the high oh i can't remember how many miles but i believe it was under 100,000 miles but i had to get um, a certain type of um oil change that was a little bit more than a regular oil change because i had high mileage and i think i had to do some other stuff with my car so yeah watch out for the mileage and if you want to know more about mileage on cars and stuff like that i recommend that you check out some other videos here on youtube and also get like the artifacts on different cars as well this is another tip that i didn't add in my notes but when you look for the vehicle and you find the vehicle try to get the car effects on that if it's not offered and then also you might could go on the carfax website and see um different facts about um the cars that you're interested in to see you know how high of a mileage is bad for that type of vehicle okay so say that you went the route of buying a used car now some people you might go with a new car and if you are then you more than likely not going to click on this video um and if you do then you won't have to worry about most of these these things because the car is basically untouched but you can ask questions at the dealership and all of that but um this video is mostly going to be about used cars if you decide to buy a used car and you instead of buying it from a dealership you decide to buy it from a personal seller i can't think of the other name that i would call this type of person what i mean by this is just a regular person that has a car they no longer want it they're selling it and um you're buying it directly from them and it's in their name so if you go this route then you want to ask them about the title and everything because if they don't have the title anymore then you're not able to get the title in your name all of that so you definitely if you buy from a personal seller you want to ask them if they have the title um if they don't have it then don't buy it because the title is very important and like i mentioned you could do a little bit more research into titles if the title is very important the title basically says that this car is in your name you own this vehicle and um you have to sign your title so if they don't have the title which is a small piece of paper that has the name make a model of the car and the VIN number and all of that and you have to sign it it has to have your name on it then you're going to be messed up so do not buy a vehicle from a person whether it's from a personal seller or a dealership without the title okay another tip would be to have an experienced driver with you or someone that's knowledgeable about cars you're going car shopping and this is just to ensure that no one takes advantage of of you and they can also ask um the person that's selling the vehicles um different questions that you might not be able to think of or you might forget to ask sometimes if somebody sees that you're inexperienced they can mark up the car higher than it's worth and yeah you want to get the best deal that you possibly can somebody that's really knowledgeable in cars an experienced driver someone that has had multiple vehicles or just knows a lot about cars they can make sure that you're not being taken advantage of like they're not giving you a price that's way higher than it's supposed to be and they can also help you to get a better deal like they can help to negotiate um the car for you okay another thing you want to consider is whether you want to finance your vehicle you could um buy the car outright you can finance or you can lease and lease and finance comes with a dealership normally if you buy from a personal seller they want all the money up front um but a lease is just like leasing an apartment okay you sign a lease say you have an apartment right you sign a lease for a year or two and you could decide after that lease if you want to stay or if you're going to go somewhere else your lease is up and you have to re-sign the lease right so it's kind of similar to that so a lease vehicle uh, would be you just um picking a vehicle that you like and then you can have that lease for three years four years five years and then once that lease is up we will go look for another car and then lease it again okay and then a finance when you finance the vehicle that's just basically you um saying that you want to have this car you want to keep it after you know you already pay after the payments are done you're more than likely to get a loan and you can get this loan um from a bank your own personal bank or another bank or company that you know of 
or auto loan place, or you could go through the dealerships, um, companies that they recommend that they have on the spot or on source. You'll pay on that loan every month until you pay it off. And then once you pay off that balance, so say you get a, you finance the vehicle for $25,000 and it's for five years. So after the five years is up, you pay that $25,000, um, whether you did it, you paid a certain amount every month, like $300 per month, or you just decide after a while that you wanted to um, pay the rest, like pay the rest in full. But once you finish paying that $25,000 up off, then um, it's yours or whatever. And you could decide what to do with it. You could keep it and don't have to worry about making any more payments or you could sell it to somebody else because now it's fully in your name. So that's kind of what, that's basically what financing is in a nutshell. Somebody probably could explain it better than me, to be honest, but um, that's what I know about financing, okay? You want to decide if you want to finance with the dealership or you want to finance somewhere else. So you want to know about the APR, like how much insurance they're going to be charging you and all of that to see if you're going to get the best deal. And a lot of this comes um, when you finance or lease, your credit score plays a big part in this. So if you don't have a good credit score, your best bet is just to save up enough money to just buy a car outrightly, like just buy it and pay for it in full. Or you could go to a buy here, pay here, but even those types of places, they want you to have, they want to look at your credit score, most of them. But um, yeah, so your credit score plays a big role. So you want to know what your credit score is. So um, make sure you check out Experian or Credit Karma to see what your credit score is. Um, and if you don't have credit yet, then you want to start building it. And um, you could also have a vehicle in someone else's name with their permission. So if your parents want to put it in their name or they want to co-sign, that's good. You could get a better vehicle or you could have better chances of getting a vehicle with a co-signer. I actually had to do that with my last vehicle, my vehicle that I have now. So yeah, those are some things to consider. So like I just mentioned, mentioned about credit, this is the, actually the next um, tip that I have for you guys is basically know your credit score. Finance companies, they usually look for a 650 or more credit score. So um, you want to have at least a 650 to get a decent um, deal. If you have something lower than that, like if you're in the 500s, then you're not going to really get a good deal more than likely. We're just talking about in general, you know, God could do anything, but just in general, when you have a credit score that's not good, that's like in the 500s, then you're not going to get that good of a deal. You actually, if you have like 700 or more, you could get really good deals. But a lot of the companies, they look for a 650 or more credit score, okay? If you have 600, then you you are, you are more than likely okay, and then they can work with you. Um, and the lower your credit score is, um, the higher your payments are more than likely going to be and um you have to pay you have to like i mentioned you have to pay more per month or you'll have to put down a bigger down payment but whether you have good credit or bad credit um the higher the down payment that you make the better so if you have really good credit you can get approved for zero dollars down or a low really low down payment but if you decide to um, make a higher down payment then your monthly bill or your monthly car note is going to be a lot lower so consider that try to put as much down as possible even if you get approved for zero dollars down you might want to take that if you don't have it like that right now but you know um, more than likely in the long run when you put down a lower when you put down a higher down payment or your monthly finance um, payments your loan payments won't be as high Another thing to consider when purchasing your first vehicle is to have um, car insurance. So most states require that you have car insurance. Me, I live in New Jersey and New Jersey, they definitely require that you have car insurance and you actually can't buy a vehicle until you have car insurance. Even if you buy it from a personal seller, they will ask you for your car insurance. Now, some people, they might, you know, <laughs> they might, 
get around that but um when you buy it definitely if you buy it from a dealership they're going to ask you for your um, car insurance and you can't purchase the vehicle until you have car insurance so say you find the vehicle that you like and you know that you really want it um you have to figure out what car insurance that you want you, you can get a quote online to see what car insurance is best for you and so once you find that car insurance you want to call let them know that you're interested in a, in a vehicle or that you're about to purchase this vehicle and give them the vin number and then you know they'll sign you up with the car insurance and then once you have that car insurance you could even do this the same day that you're going to purchase the vehicle then once the car dealership sees that you have the insurance then they'll do all the paperwork with you and all of that then say something doesn't turn out right you can always call up that car insurance and cancel it um, if everything doesn't work out but unfortunately at least in new jersey that's how you have to do it you have to do that first okay and plus it's just great to have car insurance because you don't know what may ha may happen someone might hit your vehicle you can get into a car accident and you want to make sure that stuff is covered okay so you don't have to pay out of pocket period so you just want to figure out the best car insurance for you um are you going to be driving a lot are you going to just be commuting back and forth from work or school every day um and how i think also you have to think about your personal skills too um, are you really nervous on the road and all of that stuff, okay? Or do you live in an area that there's like crazy drivers or there's a lot of crazy stuff, crazy activity happening in your area or areas that you have to drive by or through? So, or if you go on the highway a lot in your commute. So that is something to consider when purchasing your um, car insurance. I can't tell you the best one to get. It just all depends on that and how much you're willing to pay as well. Okay. Okay. So next is my recommendations. And this is going to be the final tip as well. Um, you guys, if you have any additional tips, feel free to leave them down in the comments because I probably missed out on a few things. But um, another thing I would recommend, and this is just about where to buy, where to buy a vehicle. So my top um, recommendations are to just find a vehicle that you really like that's um not too expensive that you saved up for and just buy it in full and then my second recommendation would be a place like carvana so i choose these because this is what i did and these two worked the best for me like i had the less amount of stress when i did these two so i bought my first vehicle with cash and I was like, it was so good to buy my first vehicle with cash and to just pay it all out um, because I didn't have to worry about making payments. So I didn't have any payments. The only thing I had to worry about was maintaining the vehicle and buying gas. Okay. And then my second vehicle I got from Carvana. So I did have, I did end up getting monthly payments, um, but um the payments were low and carvana works with you if you don't like the vehicle you could trade it in um within a certain amount of time to get another vehicle and it's so easy i really like carvana um but you guys if you watched that um other video that i did about my credit score going up you know what happened to me so you know if none of this would have happened to me then i'm more than likely was just now um, be getting from my first vehicle i think that i would i had would have still gotten another vehicle after my first one just to upgrade but i would have had my first vehicle for much longer if certain things didn't happen but um yeah that is everything you guys i hope that these tips were helpful for you um if you have any questions leave it down in the comment section and you experienced drivers and people that know a lot about cars if you have any additional comments or tips to add to what i just said leave it down below and um if anybody we see anybody leaving any questions and you know you know the answer to it then you can help them out in the comment section as well okay so thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope that this video helped you if it did make sure to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye bye